Good morning and welcome. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insight. And believe it or not, we are in Divine Experience Day 20. Wow. It has been a journey. We've learned a lot. And today we want to start by painting a picture in your mind. I got brothers and as my kids were growing up, uh, when they were tiny, I know sometimes my brothers would come and they're playing around with the kids and there's one of these games that would make me cringe and free every time you know that game where an adult throws the baby up in the air and then holds them as a mother he makes you tremble and you have all these thoughts going on like what if they fall or if they're not there to catch them on time but have you ever wondered what goes on in the mind of a child when you throw them high up in the air why they go up and come down laughing they let you throw them up not necessarily because they know you will break the fall but because they know you will catch them. And this was the kind of childlike faith that was in the little boy who gave his lunch to some strangers and ended up being part of the miracle that fed thousands. Children believe that the world is beautiful, that it's full of potential. They trust without reservations. They are never worried that they will look crazy. And I believe it's because of how children view things and their kind of trust that Jesus says in Matthew 18 verse 3, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Today we are going to read the story of this man, this friend of God, who was called to rather a difficult task. It is a story anyone who has ever read the Bible knows about, a story that still casts a chill over my heart every time I read it. It was a story of this man we've covered in the last few episodes, Abraham, the friend of God. When he's commanded by the Lord to sacrifice his only son, And so our reading is from Genesis 3, verse 19, 3 up to 19, Genesis 22, 3 to 19, sorry about that. And it says, So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on that day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, Father, my father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamp for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamp for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the land, do or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, 
and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will, be, will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Ooh, it's intense, yeah? yeah? Yeah, you can take a moment too. You know, as a parent, I don't think Abraham had a regular night. It must have been a sleepless night for him. He had waited for decades for this boy. And it took several visits and reminder forms from God that they would have a son before Isaac was born. And then out of the blues, God tells him, Abraham, go to the mountain and sacrifice this boy to me. But the Bible says he rose early in the morning. He might not have understood the whole thing. His heart might have been crushing within him, but Abraham did not show any hesitation. The Bible says that he saddled his donkey. He split the wood for the sacrifice. And I can only imagine the state of his heart while he's doing this. But he did it. None the rest, because he trusted the source of his command. The Lord had brought him to this place of trust through the experiences he had given him, through the visitation, through the birth of his son, through the rescue of Lot from Sodom. Because like we said yesterday, the Lord doesn't do things without a purpose. He had built Abraham up for this moment. The Bible says that on the third day, he saw the place of the altar. I don't know if you get the heaviness of that statement. Abraham had three long days and nights to think about the task he had been given. Three long days to imagine all possible ends to these stories. Three long days to reconsider his choices. He must have felt like he was roasting in the slow fire. And yet we see him saying, I will go yonder and worship. In the midst of the agony in his heart, in the midst of the confusion he must have had after that command from the Lord, he still bowed down to worship. He separated himself from those who were with him and went with his son to worship. And he tells the young man, we will come back. I don't think he understood how whatever he was believing in was going to work. There is no record of resurrection in the Bible before this time. But Abraham knew Isaac was the light. He was the seed, the son of the promise. He knew God would not break his word. And so he trusted even when he didn't know how God would fulfill his promise. And the Bible says that when his hand was lifted, ready to slay his son, the Lord called him and stopped the sacrifice. And when Abraham raised his eyes, he saw the lamb caught in the thicket. What a trust. He was willing to trust the Lord with the most prized thing in his life. He displayed his heart towards the Lord. He trusted the Lord without reservation. He displayed the ultimate demonstration of love and the Lord reciprocated. 
And after this sacrifice, Abraham did what most of those who we have looked at did. He named that place Jehovah Jireh. Because on that mountain, the Lord had provided. That experience had left a mark in his life. And he chose to remember it for the rest of his life. He named that place Mount Providence. And once again, we see the Lord reaffirming his promises to Abraham. The promise to bless him. The promise to multiply him. The promise that his descendants will be blessed. And we said yesterday that the Lord remembers. He remembers his word. He remembers his vows. Even when we cannot comprehend what his plans are, even when we have no idea how he is going to fulfill his promises, the Lord remembers. May the Lord visit you today. May he bring you to this place of faith that even when you do not understand what he's doing, even when your spirit is crashing within you, you may put your trust in his word, that you may obey his word, that you may worship him whatsoever, however, none the rest. May the Lord give you the grace to carry you through the until the promise are fulfilled. And however long it may take, however tough the journey may be, remember that the Lord never goes back on his word. You will come back with a fulfilled promise. It doesn't matter if no one has ever had a comeback from it before. When the Lord visits, he comes to change things. He comes to bring about new things. He comes to reaffirm and to restore. And by the time he is done with you, you will be singing a new song. You will no longer remember that place. By the time you've waited or the anguish you have withstood, but by what the Lord has done. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is faithful, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Shalom. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with Divine Experience, Day 20. Thank you for your continued support and encouragement to the making of the Daily Insights. Reaching an average of 60 people a day with over 10,000 total plays. I invite you to partner with us by supporting this podcast through monthly or one-time donation. Your contribution will be used to sustain the episode subscription and hosting platform. My goal is to inspire and share insightful messages in our generation, empowering one person at a time each day to continue serving the purposes of God in our generation. Your support is highly appreciated. Click that support button now and give your support. You can support with $1, $5, or as much as you are able to give. Blessings.